Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at an exponential equation. We have 4 to the power x plus 4 to the power 1 over x equals 8. And we've done similar problems before. If I can include a link down below, I will. Alright, so to solve this equation, we're going to be using what is called AMGM inequality. That's the arithmetic mean and the geometric mean being compared. But that only works if our expressions or uh, the terms that we're going to compare are positive. So let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, 4 to the power x and 4 to the power 1 over x, they're always positive. We know that, right? So let's just suppose x is greater than 0. Now, if you compare 4 to the power x, the arithmetic mean of these two numbers or expressions, to so their geometric mean. Geometric mean, as you'll hopefully remember, is the product, uh, the square root of the product. So this is going to be their geometric mean. And this is called AM GM inequality. Okay, now we do know that 4 to the power x plus 4 to the power 1 over x is equal to 8, so we can replace this with 8. And that's going to give us 4 is greater than or equal to square root of 4 to the power x plus 1 over x, since we can add the exponents when the bases are equal. Great, so how does this help us? First of all, um, notice that everything inside the radical is positive. We can square both sides. Uh, 4 is positive, so it's all good. If you square both sides and put the 4 to the power x plus 1 over x on the left-hand side, you get 4 to the power x plus 1 over x is less than or equal to 16. And this just indicates that x plus 1 over x is greater than or equal to 2. Because if x plus 1 over x is greater than 2, then 4 to the power of that number is going to be greater than 16. So we got this interesting inequality, and if you replace x with certain values, for example, let's say we test x equals 2. This gives us 2 plus 1 half, and that's definitely greater than 2. If you replace x with 5, you get 5 plus 1 fifth. That's definitely greater than 2, so on and so forth. What happens if you replace x with negative values? But we already said we want x to be positive. So if x is positive, this inequality is not going to work except for one case. And we'll talk about that. But let's go ahead and look at the AMGM from another perspective. So we're going to use AMGM again, but this time we're going to use it on x and 1 over x. And again, x is positive in this case, and if we have a positive x, x plus 1 over x divided by 2, which is the arithmetic mean or the average, is always going to be greater or equal to the square root of x times 1 over x. But x times 1 over x, as long as x does not equal 0, is equal to 1. So from here we get the following, x plus 1 over x is greater than or equal to 2. So if x is positive, this is always true, as we noticed with different values. So, what is that supposed to mean? You have two inequalities, put it together, one inequality says x plus 1 over x is less than or equal to 2. The other inequality says x plus 1 over x is greater than or equal to 2. So if you put these two inequalities together, let me go ahead and use the same uh, color that I used. Actually, I could go ahead and probably just be lazy and move this to the bottom, and we can go ahead and compare them like this. Okay, notice that these two don't contradict each other, but the only intersection point is x plus 1 over x equals 2. All right? And this means the following. Let's go ahead and solve this. Uh, if you multiply both sides by x, you get x squared plus 1 equals 2x. Then this gives us x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 0. But this just implies x minus 1 quantity squared is 0. And that means x equals 1. So that gives us a unique solution uh, for both of these inequalities to be true at the same time. So x equals 1 seems to be the only solution, but is that the only solution? Like, seriously. So let's go ahead and take a look at the negative values, because we only looked at positive x values. Now we've got to uh, figure out what is going on if x is less than 0. So to understand what is going on with uh, x less than 0, we could again test some values. Obviously, this is not a proof or any solution by any means, but it kind of gives us an idea how to proceed. So this is our equation, and we want x to be negative. So think about it. How about x equals negative 1, right? Let's just test it out to see what is going on. We get 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4, and that is equal to 1 half. That's definitely much less than 8. 
Well, if we use smaller uh, or negatively larger values like x equals, I don't know, negative 3, uh, is that going to matter? Is that going to change anything? Well, we have 4 to the power of negative 3 plus 4 to the power negative 1 third. Now, this is like 1 over 64, very small number, and this is going to be like 1 over cube root of 4. If you think about it, cube root of 4 is, you know, greater than, a little greater than 1, but less than 2. So it's like 1 point maybe 2, I don't know, something like that. And 1 over that is going to be less than 1. 1 over 64 is way less than 1. There's some is going to be small, definitely less than 8. So what is going on here? With negative values, we're not really getting anywhere. But let's take a look at it from a more general perspective. And let's go ahead and do a little bit of limits. Remember, when I posted this, I told you I'm going to be using a little bit of calculus, not too much. So notice if we look at the limit as x. OK, here's the thing. We said that, OK, at positive values, we're good because 1 seems to be the only solution, right? So we, I'm going to show you the graph later on. But for right now, we have 1, 8 uh, as a solution, right? OK, great. So that is a solution. But for negative values, now what happens at 0, right? Obviously, our expression is undefined at 0, but we can kind of approach 0 from the left. There's no need to approach from the right because we're interested in negative values. So what happens if you uh, find the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of 4 to the x plus 4 to the power of 1 over x? How do you find this limit? Now think about it. x is very, very small, and, you know, you have something like 4 to the power 0. That is 1, for sure. It doesn't matter from the right or from the left. 4 to the power 0 is 1. But as x approaches 0 from the left, you're dealing with 1 over 0, which approaches infinity. But since you're approaching 0 from the left, it's going to approach negative infinity. So you have something like 4 to the power negative infinity. I know some people who are very rigorous are not going to like that notation. But anyways, this just means 1 over 4 to the power infinity, which is like 1 over infinity, and that is like 0. In other words, this limit is just going to be 1. So as x approaches 0 from the left, uh, our y value is going to approach 1. Okay, something like this. You're going to have an open dot at 0. What happens if x approaches negative infinity? Let's go ahead and take a look at that limit now real quick. And we're going to conclude with the graph. If x approaches negative infinity, this is going to approach 4 to the power of negative infinity, which is 1 over 4 to the power of infinity, which is 0. And this is going to approach 1 over infinity, 4 to the power of 0, which is 1. So the limit is going to 1 again. So our values are going to kind of um, go between 1 and 1, making a minimum at some point uh, at negative value. So in other words, if x is less than 0, then 4 to the x plus 4 to the power 1 over x is going to be always less than 1, which means we only have one solution. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick. Hopefully, this is going to give you a better idea. So our graph in the positive section is kind of like a curve. Uh, it is the minimum value for that function for positive x values. So x equals 1 is the valid solution. But for negatives, there is no intersection point because our y values are not going to exceed 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out the shorts. And bye-bye.